Good afternoon. My name is Doug Slack, and I am uh, honored to uh, to be the minister today to uh, to help uh, you all, the family, and <coughs> excuse me, the friends of Tony Earl uh, Suggs, as we honor uh, as we honor his his life today. Let's begin with prayer, shall we? Lord, we do. We thank you for this day that you have given to us. And Lord, as we come to this time of this service, as we honor the life of Tony Suggs today, Lord, I pray that uh, something that um, might be said uh, that would be a source of encouragement to the family today. And uh, as we honor uh, his, his life and as we look at the, some of the scriptures, from your word, that would be a source of encouragement to us as well. And uh, then as we go to the cemetery in just a little while here, Lord, give us protection and uh, be with us in that, uh, in that moment as well. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, we'd like to start uh, our time uh, together just by reading some selected uh, passages of scripture. Uh, as I said in, in my prayer, that would just be a source of encouragement uh, to you. The scriptures have a lot to say about death and dying and, and, and about life as well. And uh, we're encouraged. The Apostle Paul encourages us to honor those who go before us uh, because he says that this is the first commandment with a promise, that when we honor our loved ones, he says that it may go well with you and that you may live long on the earth as well. Jesus said to his disciples, uh, on his uh, Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And uh, that's the main thought uh, I would, would leave you with today. And everything that I will say to you is that uh, God wants to give you comfort in your loss and uh, wants to, uh, to help you as you move forward uh, in, in life. The night before Jesus' own death, he said this to his disciples. He said to let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Instead, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. But where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and you know the way. The psalmist writes this, uh, these words in Psalm chapter 27, to wait on the Lord, to be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Back to the New Testament, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews writes these words, as a source of encouragement. He says that since then we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, who's Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings that we do, yet was without sin. And so let us come boldly, come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, and there we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we, when we need it most. And so I encourage you today to lean on, on God's grace during, during this time. And then the last portion of scripture, um, if I get back to the Apostle Paul, he wrote these words, that uh, all praise belongs to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the God of our merciful Father and is the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we'll be able to give them the same comfort that God has, has given us. I want to take portions of the obituary and honor a little bit of Tony's life here today. Tony was born on uh, October the 11th, uh, 1941 to Earl and uh, Melvina Isabel Suggs. And later in his life, he married Kathleen Sellers uh, back in 1993. As I shared with the family and, 
you may have overheard us uh, talking some. When we look at, uh, at Tony's life, he uh, man, had a wide range of interests uh, in, his, in his life. As uh, far as his work, he worked for a while at Delco Electronics in, in Kokomo. And I'm not sure at all in what order all of this took place. But he worked at Delco Electronics. He attended uh, Indiana University Kokomo to study computer uh, inter integrated manufacturing. Um, talked with the family about how an avid gun enthusiast that uh, that he that he was, and uh, in more maybe more recent times, he's he's known for his passion for music, and of course the violin shop here in here in Tipton, where he not only did he offer violin lessons, but he also uh, handcrafted uh, viol violins and how he was talking that that, that is just an art. That's a, that's a talent uh, that, uh, that only few people possess that can do things uh, like that. And of course, from that, he had his shop here in, uh, here in Tipton. Earlier in his life, and he was really proud of, proud of this, as he served our country in the, in the Army the 101st Airborne Division that was stationed in Fort Campbell, uh, Kentucky. Uh, some of the survivors, I won't include all this, but some of the survivors include uh, his, his wife and then what we'll say is three stepchildren, but uh, we know that he, as the family has, more than one person has stated that he, he loves you guys and thought of you all as children. Uh, there's Kim Bridgewater, Kempton, Kirk Bridgewater, Christy, Overly, Two siblings, Stan, Sykes, and Nancy Williams. And I counted here, I believe, two grandchildren, and two nieces, and a great niece, and a great nephew. So, quite the, quite the family that you guys have, and that, uh, and that he had, for, for sure. I want to uh, read to you probably what is the the most well-known psalm, and it's interesting that uh, we're here today to honor uh, a musician, because uh, when you look at the book of Psalms, the Psalms is really a hymnal. I don't know how many people know that, but it's the Jewish hymnal. And we've lost, over the centuries, we've lost the music to it, as far as how these Psalms were sung. We've lost that. But the, the Psalms are lyrics to songs, and uh, a man by the name of David, we just know as, as David. David uh, would grow up to become the second king of Israel. But David would pin uh, these words. And I so wish that we had the music uh, to it to, today. But uh, listen to the lyrics that David wrote in the 23rd Psalm. You, you may know it. You even may know it by heart. But it reads this way. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And he leads me, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. And my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to remind you today, and I want to develop this 23rd Psalm for just a, a few minutes here, is that the Lord wants to be our shepherd. And uh, when he is our shepherd, uh, as David would write these lyrics, that uh, we wouldn't be in want, that God is our great provider. And I know that God provided uh, for Tony and gifted him with these incredible gifts and interests. Even the interests and the hobbies we have all come from the Lord. The Lord is our shepherd, and because of that, he's our great provider. David, as a poet and as a songwriter, could write these lyrics and these, wood, these word pictures. He says, he makes me as a shepherd, he makes me lie down in green pastures because we're the, we're the sheep. 
He makes us, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. David, before he ever would become a king, as a young man, was a shepherd boy and raised sheep. And I can picture him uh, many times sitting under a tree and with, with paper, parchment, and writing lyrics to what many of the psalms, what we have in our Bible today. And he was able to articulate with word pictures of green pastures and sheep being led beside still waters and he restores our soul and he leads us in paths of, of righteousness for his namesake. We know that I'm sure in, in Tony's life that God was able to lead him many, many times uh, through paths that were right for him. Being in the military, paths of protection and wisdom and guidance that, uh, that he needed. And that same God wants to do that for us as well. He wants to lead us in our lives through green pastures and still waters. And he wants to restore our souls, um, especially in times of when we lose our loved ones. He wants to restore and give, and give strength and energy and grace. He wants to lead us in paths of righteousness. Righteousness is a is a fancy word for just rightness, the right way, the right kind of living, paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. And then he, he transitions then kind of into the second half of, the, of this little song, which we know is the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you're with me, your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. You may have heard this before, and maybe this is something new, but I remind you today that the Bible, in its completeness, says, do not fear, 365 times. And I've heard it preached before. The reason why it, uh, that it's like that is because it's a promise for every day of the year to do not fear. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We certainly live in a world, whether it's COVID or other kinds of uh, things going on in our world where we might be tempted to fear. But I remind you today that God says to us lovingly, do not fear, do not fear evil. Why? Because he says, I am with you. And David talking about God being the great shepherd, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. A shepherd in, in that line of work in that time period. A shepherd would usually carry a stick or a shepherd's staff. You see pictures, a lot of times we see pictures of Jesus with a, with a staff. There, there, is, there are two reasons for that. A shepherd would carry a staff as a big stick to protect it from wild animals. And God is our great protector as well. I'm so thankful when I look at my own life, the times that God has protected me even when I didn't know it. Maybe looking back now, and certainly the times that I, I did even see it at the time where God's protected. But a shepherd would carry a stick to protect the sheep um, as well. A shepherd would also take that same staff, that same stick, and sometimes discipline the sheep. Uh, looking back now in my life, I'm glad for the times that my parents disciplined me, though it wasn't fun at the time. It never is, right? Uh, but sometimes God has to discipline us as well. So a shepherd would use that stick if he needed to kind of motivate the sheep to, to behave if it was getting out of line. So a shepherd would do that. Use the stick to, for protection, for discipline, and also sometimes the shepherd would use that very same stick to pet or to encourage the sheep, to love on the sheep. And we know that God wants to do that as well. So God wants to protect us. Sometimes he has to discipline us, and he always wants to love us. For your rod and your staff, they comfort, they comfort me. And then verse 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. The culture in which that was written 
um, the culture really doesn't exist much anymore. It certainly is different from our culture. But uh, anointing your head with oil, that would be a way of if a traveler was coming uh, from out of town and would come into a, a guest house, if you will, the owner of the house would take oil and would offer it to the guest. And it was a way of offering refreshment. It would be a way, uh, a way in our culture, we might, when we have a guest come over to our house that's been on a long journey, we might say, uh, if you would have liked to wash up before supper, uh, the bathroom is down the hall and on the left. Uh, this culture would take olive oil and would anoint people, and it would be a way of, of, uh, of freshening up. And so, again, it means this culture doesn't exist for us now, but, but when you look at that, my cup runs over. You anoint my head with oil. God wants to refresh us. God wants to restore us. And in our time of loss when we lose loved ones, I just remind you of that today. That God, uh, God wants to restore and, and to, give, to give comfort. And then the last verse. Surely goodness and mercy shall, shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy Mercy is uh, not getting what we deserve. And the Bible says we've all turned our backs on God, but out of God's love and mercy, he wants to forgive us and has provided a way for us through Christ. Surely goodness and surely mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I think we, obviously we don't have that opportunity today, but if Tony could come back and speak to us today, I think he would share stories. I think he probably would. Of how God had been good to him and merciful to him. As I talked with the family today, uh, I guess there were quite a number of people that's come through here uh, today paying their respects that Tony was able to touch through, uh, through the violin lessons and just who he was in life. And I mean, you just think of somebody's life like that, the, the great impact that he, that he had. All of that is because of God's goodness and mercy and it says, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Tony passed away at the age of, uh, according to the obituary here, of 79, almost 80 years, almost eight decades of talent and gifts and abilities and interests from music to serving our country uh, to working with his hands to provide a living for him and his family. And uh, we, thank, we thank God for the life uh, that, uh, that Tony lived. We're going to close in prayer. And after the prayer, uh, we're going to turn the, the proceedings over to the, our funeral directors here. And they're going to dismiss us uh, from the funeral home here. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for, for music. Thank you for uh, people who have gifts and abilities that can... First of all, make instruments like Tony made. Um, thank you for people like Tony who, uh, as a younger man, defended our country and for what it stands for. And, and uh, we thank you for his service and how he uh, loved his, uh, who he considered to be his children and his extended family. Thank you, Father, for the kind of person that Tony was and Lord we thank you for your word that we still have some uh, two three four thousand years old lyrics written by another musician to encourage us that the Lord you want to be our shepherd that you want to lead us and guide us in times like this and so father I continue to pray for the family as they uh, experience this loss that of, uh, in their lives and uh, life will, will, will return back to normal, but it'll be a new normal. And so I pray for their peace and their comfort, their hope and their help uh, during this time. Now, Lord, be with us as we get ready to go to the cemetery, as we continue to honor uh, Tony's life. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Read a couple more portions of scripture before we conclude with the, uh, with the committal. Psalm 24 reads this way. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, 
the world and those who dwell therein. For he, God, has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. For he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your, your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And the last passage of Scripture says, for this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us the eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, because we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient and temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Let's pray, shall we? O merciful Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, and whom whoever believeth shall live, though he die, and whoever liveth and believeth in him shall not die eternally. We meekly ask you, O Father, to raise us from the death of sin into the righteousness of life, that when we shall depart this life, we may rest in him. And at the general resurrection on that last day, we may be found acceptable in your sight, and receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall pronounce to all who love and fear you. And he shall say, Come, blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, we ask you, O Father, through Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. For as much as the spirit of this departed loved one has returned to God who gave it, we therefore tenderly commit his body to the ground in the sure trust and in the certain hope that in the power and the love of Jesus Christ our Lord at whose divine call that they that sleep in him shall one day rise to stand with him and hear with all of the saints the, these welcome words enter into your master's joy for his is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.